Thanks to all of you. I think we do have uh, at least two or three minutes for, for a couple of questions. And uh, uh, while someone's coming up to the mic, I'll, I'll ask one. Um, really to one of Marion's last points there, uh, Leon and Cheryl, based on your experience with this issue, I'm wondering if you see types of community resources that, that may not have been fully engaged in this issue yet that you would see as particularly promising for the future. Yeah, there's a little switch there. In Massachusetts, we have uh, got a grant from the National Convergence Partnership, and we have a Massachusetts Convergence Partnership, and what we're doing is bringing together the original private funders for Mass in Motion and trying to get them to expand out to other sectors of funding to see if we can't engage them and to show them that ed in education, um, health is important to them as is education is important to health and trying to broaden those folks that are at the table having a conversation with us about health and all policy. So we're expanding it. It's uh, very slow going. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the big partners that people talk a lot about are the business community um, and how do you partner with them effectively at a local level. Um, I think the work that's happening through the Partnership for Healthy America, um, and I think Larry is on a panel later, um, provides, I think, a unique opportunity to figure out the commitments that are happening through the national, how, do, how does that translate locally? For instance, you know, one of the commitments that came out of PHA was the grocers that were committing to reducing the food deserts in 40% of the you know, food desert areas. Uh, so how does that translate to business partners, business being effective partners locally? Um, so I think that piece is one that I think needs more work, and I think there's some cities that do a really good job. But then I think the other piece that um, you heard in earlier panels that I think is really important to understand is that ownership, uh, shared accountability cannot just be this top-down approach. You know, having young people and having uh, parents and having local media kind of sharing the ownership of where we're working together to, to try to promote um, a healthy community and figuring out how you create a table for all of them to be engaged effectively or multiple multiple tables, I think is, is a recipe for success. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Dave Fugazawa, Kresge Foundation. Hi, Marianne. Um, I guess this question would be mostly for Leon, although I think all of you could respond to it. Since, and I'm, I'm only asking this because I didn't hear anybody mention this. Uh, we sort of talk about doing these things because it's a good thing to do, because it's a healthy thing to do. But uh, some of the things that we have heard, especially around the community development thing, is that health could become a competitive advantage. So I'm just wondering whether, you know, either among your members, Leon, or in, in Massachusetts or in California, whether you're hearing this issue and if you can be a healthier community, you also can be, you know, be more competitive uh, economically, uh, or at least especially for, for talent and things like that. Sure. Um, it's a great point, uh, particularly we're talking about our members, which are mayors and uh, local elected officials. Uh, they tend to not just look at this from a social altruistic perspective, right? Um, I do think that there is a bottom line, right? How do you communicate the economic value? And, it's been great to see a number of mayors take that issue on quite effectively. Um, probably people in this room have heard from Mayor Chip Johnson from Hernando. I think he, he's one of those mayors that really get, gets out there uh, and talks about the economic benefit of this. Mayor Mick Cornett is another one in Oklahoma City uh, that talks about how the strategies that, he's, that they're pursuing in their cities not only is beneficial because we're creating a healthier community for individuals, but bottom line, it saves us on, our, uh, on health insurance for the city, right? Or it brings in better bi businesses want to come in to our town because we, we know we're now creating a lifestyle and a community for, uh, for people you know, that want to live in a healthy community. Uh, and so there is a, a messaging, I think, and there's more that we could do, particularly in the field, to understand it beyond just the, the, the benefit of just reducing obesity, to I think it, from a community perspective, creates more opportunities for different people to come to the table, as we're talking about, um, as they see that the, the bottom line is not just about uh, improving the lives of children and youth, but we want to create a healthy community where people want to come live, and that has economic benefits. So in we'll Massachusetts, the we have here. the Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund that was recently created, the first of its kind in the nation, $60 million. And we've been charged with improving health outcomes and um, 
reducing cost in three years. And so we really are focused on secondary preventions, conditions that are very preventable, and so that we can really show what we always say, you know, a dollar spent in public health will save you five or six dollars in uh, clinical or medical care. We actually now have a three-year time a clock ticking on us. We're about to make awards in the next week or so. And so we're really excited about the opportunity that we have to really show we can do that. Please thank our panelists and we'll make the transition to the next group.